Hey everyone, this is WAFB's Lester Douay. Hope you all are doing well. First off, I'd like to welcome you to our YouTube channel. We hope to provide you some entertainment, sports, everything Louisiana, and sort of breaking down in a more casual way some of the big stories of the week. So we want to start this week by highlighting one of our pretty talked about stories. One of our anchors actually saw this sign on the side of the road one day while she was driving. And take a look, it says, your generosity could lead to a fatality. To help the needy, donate to local charities. So some pretty blunt words. Come to find out that were put up by the Mayor President Brooms Homelessness Prevention Coalition. Take a look here. We're going to show you guys the article here. The goal is to eliminate homelessness in the city. That's what the goal of that group is. So we reported on this story Tuesday night. The mayor's chief administrative officer, Dr. Rivar Jones, actually said we're placing our signs very strategically where we visibly have seen panhandling take place on a more aggressive platform. But the message on these signs had a lot of you all talking on social media. There was also the fact that there was a typo. It's supposed to say brhelps.org. And all it says right here, as you can see right here, is brhelp. Org. So it should take you to this organization, which has a lot of resources that help out the less fortunate here in our community, but it didn't do that as well. So obviously the fact that they can't even get that right probably just wasn't good to even start out with. So obviously the few signs that were already up will definitely have to come down or be replaced or modified. So let's fast forward to Wednesday. Take a look here. We hear that the language on the signs are actually changing as a whole. And the city is going to fix the typo that we pointed out. This is all less than 24 hours after our story aired. I think the signs were more sort of geared just to alert people to watch out when they're sitting in traffic near one of these signs. If people choose to give to the less fortunate, just to make sure that they're aware that they are there. But we want to make things clear. There is a huge difference between aggressive panhandling and homelessness. We wanted to extend the conversation today on what we can all do to sort of end homelessness in the red stick and what resources are available all around us. Joining me now is the director of St. Vincent de Paul, Michael Acaldo. Michael, what are you guys seeing boots on the ground here in Baton Rouge? Oh, no doubt about it. You know, uh, you know, St. Vincent de Paul has been in the Baton Rouge community since 1865, so 155 years of service. And obviously, uh, we have many decades of service for those who are experiencing homelessness. And certainly with the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen um, more challenges in serving those who uh, are experiencing homelessness. Uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, all the protocols and safety precautions we have to follow, it has made things much more difficult. Michael, how bad is the homeless situation here in Baton Rouge, in your, in your perspective and opinion? Well, you know, if you look around the country, you know, if you look at big cities like Los Angeles and Seattle and some of the uh, other areas, our problems are much smaller. Uh, but certainly there are a lot of people that are experiencing homelessness that are suffering from mental illness, suffering from addiction. Um, so certainly those numbers over the course of the last few years, number of those calling uh, the street home uh, have uh, uh, have increased. And what's the difference? You s we saw the issue with the sign pop up this week. Uh, we see aggressive panhandling, panhandling and homelessness, but there is a huge difference between panhandling and homeless. Can you explain kind of what the difference is for us? Well, well, there is no doubt there is a difference because somebody who is panhandling isn't necessarily experiencing homelessness. And so um, that is the differential there. Now some are uh, experiencing homelessness. Um, and so I think that from the standpoint of a provider like St. Vincent de Paul, getting the word out to people, we have a hope card that people can go to our website and they can go to St. Vincent de Paul, sbdpbr.org, hit the, go down to the bottom and there's a thing called a hope card. They can print it out at home and they can give it to a person that may be uh, on the street and it will direct them to us. It's got our phone number on it and it is geared to trying to reach somebody who is truly in a situation of homelessness and truly in need of a hand up of hope as we call it at St. Vincent de Paul. And so from our perspective, that's the, that's the difference. Not everybody out there that is panhandling is necessarily homeless. All right. And definitely to what are some ways to help? You saw on the signs that 
really the mayor president's office um, of homeless homelessness prevention uh, that coalition they're really trying to urge people to donate to local charities but there has been some concern that when you donate to some local charities and organizations that that money really isn't allocated towards good resources but how could people be assured that you know their money is given and helps out a lot with the homeless population here in Baton Rouge well, the, try to, uh, in the selection of a charity, uh, select a charity that's been around a while and a charity that has, uh, ha you can drive by any time and you can see they're making a difference, they're accepting volunteers on an ongoing basis. And I applaud, you know, I'm a member of the Homeless uh, Prevention Coalition and I applaud the efforts of trying to get much needed needed dollars into the hands of charities like St. Vincent de Paul, Volunteers of America, Salvation Army. There are so many mainstream great uh, community charities that are out there, been around there for a long time. Those dollars can go a long way if spent right. I mean, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, uh, our administrative costs are about three and a half percent. A fundraising costs are about three and a half percent. So our overall cost uh, is seven percent. So about ninety-three percent of every dollar that's donated to St. Vincent de Paul, resources that are donated go directly to the person that are being served. So it's important to look at that. And if you see a charity that thirty percent of the dollars are going to something other than the service, then you automatically know that should be a red flag. And you know. You I feel like you don't have to always give money to some of these organizations. I'm sure uh, oh, places yeah. like you guys, Michael, would love, you know, for bottles of water. You guys are always looking for that. Maybe oh, yeah. blankets, you know, yeah. I mean, f shoes, anything like yeah. that, right? Uh, look, I think in-kind donations are so critical because, you know, people can, you know, the freeze, when it happened, a lady came by and gave us a couple of bags of knit caps that she knitted herself. And I mean, that that was just fantastic. The knit caps were very popular uh, with, with the guests that we were privileged to serve during the cold and freezing weather. Uh, I think when people really, uh, when the pandemic hit, can't tell you, mm -hmm. Lester, the number of people that called and said, I wanna make masks for those who you're sheltering. And you know that that's a big help. You know, you, you there's not enough money out there to to help those who are truly in need. And and I think that the support of the community, whether it be through in kind financial support and also volunteerism, we're we're finally able to start getting more volunteers. And with all these wonderful vaccinations happening, uh, we're hopeful that. You know, we're used to 1,500 volunteers every month right. here at our main St. Vincent de Paul campus, and and right now it's not as much as as uh, as that now because of the COVID uh, restrictions that we're under. So volunteerism is another great way they can help. And definitely, because I know that I visited. I think it was the Thanksgiving, um, yeah. the Thanksgiving feast with you guys. I think it was last year, or it was no, the year before last, before COVID yes. protocols and. That's just another way where, you know, if people want to get involved and help out, I feel like uh, the less fortunate in our community, that's a great way to help out. It's such a great cause. You meet a lot of great families and a lot of people who really are struggling and they need help and need a, a warm a warm plate of Thanksgiving food, you know, on a holiday, you know. And so that's almost, you guys appreciate volunteers almost just as much as anything else, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, 1,500 is what we're used to and we're doing it a lot less and it's it, what, what there's two things one is not only is it somebody trying to come and give back in the community but the people we are blessed to serve that might be at a hard time in their life maybe they lost a job maybe they hit a bat and we're seeing a lot of that now of course but um you know they see people taking time out of their day on thanksgiving or any regular day to come out and help them and that's an uplifting thing. If you see that somebody's coming to help you, what a gift. It's a unifying gift. And you know, in our world today, we need a lot of unity. And it's just a powerful thing to see so many people from different walks of life, different faith backgrounds, and just coming together to make a difference. Definitely. 
Michael, what do you think it's going to take to really end, I don't know if you can essentially say end homelessness, but to really make a dent in some of those goals that the coalition has for 2021, what do you think it's really going to take uh, as a community to to get to a better place here in Baton Rouge for our less fortunate? Well, I, I, you noted the goals of the Homeless Prevention Coalition, and I think getting everyone talking, I think, is something that's very positive because I think, yes, do I talk to Major Tikuts of the Salvation Army? I talk to Major Donald a lot, and you know, but this gets us all, all on the same page um, with other providers in the community, Catholic Charities, Salvation Army, DOA. Talk to David Knipe that leads the Volunteers of America all the time as well. And I, I think when we all speak together, I think that helps us. And I also think that the community, by getting behind uh, trying to help people through volunteerism and giving. And you know, WFB has gotten the word out about blankets for us before and all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. and, and people respond, they wanna help. And you know, so many times people don't recognize Baton Rouge is a great place to call home. And it's because of the people. And I think ultimately that's the solution. Obviously those who are suffering from mental illness and addiction, they need a special type of uh, services that are out there. So expanding those types of services is, are very important, but it's you and me and everyone else in the community that can make a difference. Michael, thank you so much for that great insight and definitely help out St. Vincent de Paul if you can. Definitely. Thank you so much, Lester. We appreciate the opportunity to share the good works of St. Vincent de Paul and also working with fellow partners throughout our area. So you can go to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul's website and you can find one of these hope cards to tell those who are in a situation of homelessness about the services they provide. You can print out the copies of the hope cards and keep a few in your pocket or your car. So definitely some great resources definitely here. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and be sure to click subscribe on our YouTube channel. Have a good day. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Vowell. Thanks for watching our WAFB YouTube channel. For more events, live coverage, and videos, be sure to click here to subscribe. And don't forget to download our WAFB 9 News app for coverage around the clock.